are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome to Healthy Germantown. I'm your host, Steve Walensky. Each month, we share ways for you, our Germantown residents, to enjoy a healthy life here in our city. It's February, so many of us are thinking Valentine's Day hearts. However, did you know February is also American Heart Month? The American Heart Association asks people and communities to use this month to raise awareness about heart health and steps we can all take to prevent heart disease. So one of the first recommendations of the American Heart Association is smoking cessation. Joining us to discuss steps to help yourself or maybe someone you love stop smoking is Cynthia Nunnally, Administrator of the Health Planning and Promotion Bureau for the Shelby County Health Department. Our Healthy Germantown crew recently spent some time with Germantown resident Maria Comas, who personally understands the importance of heart health. She will share her story of working, living, and getting her specialized cardiac care all here in the city of Germantown. And finally, Germantown Parks and Recreation Sports Coordinator Will Kastner is here to share all the ways the whole family can, get, can keep the heart pumping through the many sports and activities offerings here in Germantown. But first, let's welcome Cynthia Nunnally administrator of the Health Planning and Promotion Bureau for the Shelby County Health Department. Cynthia, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome, you're welcome. So can you tell our viewers a little bit about how Shelby County is helping our residents in the community quit smoking? Okay. Well, the Shelby County Health Department has a host of programs and services that we offer to the county, to any resident in Shelby County, um, and its municipalities around tobacco cessation and prevention. That includes everything from smoking cessation classes, it includes media campaigns, it includes working with schools, working with organizations like Healthier Tennessee um, chapter in um, Germantown. We do media blasts, we have health fairs, we do events, we're available to answer questions, and one of the things we really want to do is to help the state promote the quit line. So if you want any information about the health department specifically, you can check our website out at shovytnhealth.com and you can find out about the tobacco programs as well as other programs. Good. So a question for you. I've got some statistics here. One in four adult Tennesseans smoke. One in five high school students smoke. I don't know why in this day and age, but those numbers startled me when I first saw them. And that number, what made it worse, is that that's seven points higher than the national average. So it made me wonder, when you think about how we're doing here in, in Shelby County, I thought you'd be the, the source. Okay. So are smoking rates high in Shelby County? How are they trending, let's say, over the last few years? What are the latest statistics? And hopefully people are going to start taking advantage of the services that you're offering. Okay. Well, one of the things we want to keep in mind is that the state of Tennessee has a goal of uh, no more than 12% of Tennesseans smoking by the year 2020. In Shelby County, we're at 14%. So Shelby County is not as high as the state, which is now currently 21.9%, but we still have a lot of work to do because 14% is still too high. So we want to make sure that all Tennesseans, as many as possible, can stop smoking or even not start to smoke so that we reach that goal of 12% by 2020. Okay. And it's trending down. So the state, um, this time last year, the state was at 24.3%, and we're now at that 21.9%. So you can see that as a state, so that means all counties are contributing to the reduction in that percentage. So we're into the New Year's 
part of the season? Yes. Are you, is your call volume going up? Well, you know, a lot of times people make uh, resolutions at the beginning mm -hmm. of the year and they're seeking um, information about how to live healthier life. Tobacco, of course, is one of those. You know, and there are a couple of others that we also want to work on. And, of course, that's activity, which relates to heart health, mm -hmm. but also nutrition. So our call volume typically in the beginning of the year starts um, to increase just in general because people you know, think about what am I going to do to be healthier in this next year. So if someone comes to me today, tomorrow, and says, I'm ready, I want to stop, and I don't know where to start, what's that first step? That first step is to call the Tennessee Tobacco Quit Line. It's an easy number. It's 1-800-QUIT-NOW. And what happens when you call the quit line is you get customized service on how to develop a plan that works for you to quit smoking. And so that's the first thing we recommend. There is a second recommendation, and that's that you want to set a goal. You want to go ahead, set a quit date and promise yourself that you're gonna set that date in about two weeks. You're gonna think about it, you're gonna set the date for the future, but we want you to think about, go ahead, making a commitment to yourself to set that date. And so those, those are the two things we recommend that you do first. Do you offer classes or do you refer people to classes? We do both, we do both. We offer classes at the health department um, we have staff who have been trained by the American Lung Association to do classes, but we also make referrals to our community partners because it's going to take everybody to get to that 12%. And so we try to make sure that we are accepting people, but that we're also trying to help them, you know, actually go to places that are convenient for them that may be closer to where they work closer to their neighborhood. So we want to make sure that this is a community-wide effort and that we are channeling people in lots of different directions. How many people are in a class on average? Well, typically we want, don't want to have too many. So 20 is about max, and that's a little high because you want to have um, interaction with the instructor that everybody can get you know, some attention mm -hmm. that they can, um, and if, you, if the class gets too large, that's really difficult to do. And a lot of smoke and cessation classes in, um, include a lot of discussion, a lot of personal experiences, and so you want to make sure that everybody has adequate time And are there do that. are there support groups after that? Um, there are some organizations have support groups. One of the things that I want to point out for the health department is that our cessation classes are free. So we um, have funding from the state that we use to pay for staff and materials. We also receive some tobacco settlement money that helps us make that uh, available to residents at no cost. Other, some organizations do have to charge. It just kind of depends on what the resources of that particular organization might be. And you mentioned the, the quit in time, the, the quit line, mm -hmm. uh, the quit in time program. Okay. What's so special about that and is there something special about that in this month? Okay, so what we're, what's happening this month is Governor Haslam has um, set aside and earmarked the week of February 13th through the 17th as it's quitting time Tennessee. And so what he wants to do is to get the whole state on board for focusing on let's just stop smoking. Let's just get resources out there, let's have events, let's have activities, health fairs that focus on let's not smoke and let's be a state that has really, really low smoking rates. So if you're a business or a, a church and you want to get information to promote to your employees, to your congregation, they would still call you? You can call the health department. You can call the health department at 222-9000, or like I said, you can go on our website at shelbytnhealth.com, and you can click on tobacco and get a lot of information, but you can also call that 222-9000 number and be directed to the right place. And I guess in closing, you'd say with uh, our own health, short-term and long-term in mind, if there's one thing that people could do to help themselves this year and going forward, it would be to stop. It would be to stop. 
Uh, one of the things that I didn't share when we were talking about statistics earlier is that there are 30 people who die every day in Tennessee from a tobacco-related illness. And we can stop that. We can reduce that by just one simple step. Mm -hmm. Although it's, it, it does take some work mm -hmm. to stop smoking, but it starts with that commitment. Well, on that note, you've given us a lot of information, a lot to think of us uh, about, and a lot of guidance. And we thank you very much for being here. You're welcome. When we come back, we'll hear from a Germantown resident and her first-hand account of the importance of heart health and check in with Allison Brand, our Ask the Experts segment. Back after this. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. Watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back to Healthy Germantown. We are celebrating February as Heart Health Month here on Healthy Germantown. As Germantown residents, we live in a community where our fire department EMTs have achieved a 40% cardiac arrest survival rate, which is one of the top rates in the nation. And as Germantown resident Maria Comas will tell you, it can be the difference between life and death. Um, my condition is something called the long QT syndrome. And basically, to simplify it, it has to deal with how long it takes your heart to charge from one beat to the next. And my heart does not charge at the normal pace that it should. You know, your heart charges, it beats, it has a recharge period, and then it goes on to the next beat. My heart takes too long to recharge itself. I was diagnosed in um, 2008 when I literally went into cardiac arrest and my husband had to perform CPR until the city of Germantown paramedics arrived and they had to shock my heart. Well since my first event um, I now have an implanted ICD slash pacemaker and that kind of helps me regulate my heart and as well as if anything should go wrong that that recharge period is too long then the defibrillator will kick in and stimulate my heart. Because of the fact that I can't get my heart to um, beat too fast because then that can contribute to the recharge period, I can't do any high aerobic exercises or anything like that that requires my heart to beat too, too quickly. I see Dr. Galen Van Wy. He's at the Sutherland Cardiology here in Germantown on Wolf River Boulevard. I think he's wonderful. He literally saved my life and just the staff and then the convenience. His staff is just so friendly and very, very nice. Uh, it's wonderful. It's just the convenience of having them here in Germantown and the event that something should happen and something doesn't feel right. It's nice to know that I could just give them a call and they can quickly get me in. I was wondering uh, about foods that help with blood sugar management. Foods that help with blood sugar management, really nothing's off limit. It's all about being consistent eating cons three consistent mm -hmm. meals per day at consistent times and um, not over consuming carbohydrate foods. Um, so again, focusing on a well-balanced meal that's high in fiber and protein will help keep blood sugars more stable. There has been research that cinnamon um, stabilized blood sugar, but follow-up studies have not shown that to be conclusive. Um, chromium picolinate is another supplement that people may take for blood sugar, um, but really that's only been shown to be effective if, you've ha if you have a chromium deficiency. 
What a story. It's nice to know we can live, work, and see specialized physicians in our medical corridor and all over the city, right here in Germantown. And I'd also like to thank Allison Bray for answering your questions on our Ask the Experts segment. When we come back, we'll talk to Will Kastner from the Germantown Parks and Recreation Department about the many ways you can get your heart pumping through activities provided by the city. Don't miss a beat. We'll be right back. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you read stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Thanks for being here for the final segment of this month's Healthy Germantown. We are celebrating American Heart Health Month this February on Healthy Germantown. And if sporting activities get your heart pumping, well, you're going to enjoy our next guest, Will Kastner. Hey, Will. Hello, oh, Steve. So tell us about the role of the sports coordinator and what is it that draw, drew you to Germantown? Well, the sports coordinator job is one of many hats. There's a lot of things going on all throughout the year. So uh, the way Germantown operates is the majority of our programs are put on through what we call sport providers. So it's more or less a contract agreement with these organizations so we have uh, GFL, Germantown football, we have GBL, Germantown baseball, we have lacrosse, rugby, soccer, all of these organizations that run incredible programs that we have to monitor their field usage, the light schedules, the background checks for coaches, um, make sure they pay us, all that good stuff. So there's a lot that we monitor for our contractors, but there's also a lot that we do in-house. So we run adult sports, youth sports, all kinds of stuff across the board. And to say all that, I guess what drew me to Germantown was just that aspect of community, the programs that are here, and just the excellence of the city overall. Uh, it's a great place to work. So time management. Yes. And an organization of people is has to be a talent. I don't think people realize the the size and scope of each of these leagues. Just as an example, how many uh, people, like, it, it's both adults and children, participate mm -hmm. in this variety of leagues, many of which are ongoing at the same time, right? Right, right. Uh, to do a total number, it would be, it would be large. Uh, you know, our, our youth baseball program has over 1,000 participants. Uh, soccer is up there as well. Football has over 500. Our basketball program has over 500. So it's, if you really broke down the numbers, it's a lot of people. And you're touching every neighborhood and every school yes, in the city. Mm -hmm. Even some out level. of the city. Yeah. And what? Even some out of the city. A lot of our adult softball uh -huh. teams come from all over the place. So we have a wide variety of participants, for sure. So tell us what's happening now. Well, right now we are in the middle of basketball season. Uh, we have basketball teams that start as early as first grade and go all the way up to 18 years old. So we facilitate these games and practices in our local schools. They're a huge partner in the league and in the program. We really couldn't do it without them. 
Um, so we are in the midst of a wonderful basketball season and we're having a good time. Intramurals over time means different things to different people. How has the world of intramurals evolved and, and how does it relate within the areas that you're responsible for? Yeah, so for us, we kind of divide our youth sports and intramural sports in that there is a difference in really the goal of operation. So with youth sports, you have the structure of coaches and parents that are heavily involved and heavily participate. But the goal uh, behind intramurals is have more of a youth-led program. For instance, we are kicking off an intramural program where we have Ultimate Frisbee. And the goal, the vision behind the program is to really have a large push from students to coach, to lead, and to feel like they essentially own the program. So just for those of us who may not understand what Ultimate Frisbee is, uh, is, it, is it cardio workout? Yes, is Ultimate Frisbee is, well, you can adjust the size of the field. Uh, it tends to change based on how many people you have on a team. Uh, typically you'd have between five, seven, uh, and so you can fluctuate your field size so that you don't wear yourself out too quickly. Uh, but it's essentially taking soccer and combining that with frisbee. You change a few rules, but it's a ton of fun. Wow. And it gets your heart pumping, for sure. Do you want to talk further about the collaboration with area schools? Yeah, so uh, in our initial kickoff of the intramural program last fall, we partnered with the SGA groups at Houston and Germantown High School to help promote the program. And we had a few kickoff days where we called it Frisbee Palooza, where you just, we just came out and played Frisbee. And really just to build and promote uh, the fun of not only Ultimate Frisbee, but of the intramural program. So this spring we'll start with more of a league structure uh, for the high schools. We're also opening up to eighth graders to kind of bridge the gap between middle school and high school. And we really wanted to provide a program that, that touched high schoolers. Because you know, all the things that Parks and Rec provides, the, the biggest part of our reach are families with younger kids. Mm -hmm. And so the intramural program is kind of designed to focus on that high school age group and really get them involved in something that keeps them busy and keeps them active. And you probably build relationships with a lot of them, too. We do. That's the fun yeah. part. Yeah, yes, I would sir. think so. So we have programs you, met, you referenced for kids as well. Mm -hmm. What would be some of the more popular programs for kids? And is there maybe a kids program that's under the radar that you want to take this opportunity to tell us about? For sure. You know, you ha we have the, all the traditional sports in Germantown. Like I said, basketball, football, baseball, soccer, softball, lacrosse. And so all these programs are uh, you know, heavily participated in by students and youth throughout the city. But one of the cool things that we started last summer is what we call our Friday Night Lights Tournament Series. And it's kind of a way to engage kids who are out of school and you know, sports seasons tend to fall within the school dates. Mm -hmm. And so this is a three week tournament extravaganza where we provide sports like dodgeball, wiffle ball, and kickball to engage kids while they're not in school. And it, it also benefits the parents because say, yeah, they love that. it gives them a date <laughs> night on Friday night. So we'll take, we'll take your kids. Usually, last year we did it from 7 to about 10.30, rain or shine. You know, we just have a good time. And the kids loved it. It was the first year uh, that we had the program last year, but we really had a lot of good feedback and good participation. So I feel like this summer we'll really have uh, a good year with that series. Where is it held at and where's the sign up? Well, sign ups are online. If you go to, I believe it's germantown tn.gov slash registration, all of our parks and recreation sign ups are on that page. So last year, all of the Friday Night Lights events were held at Houston Levy Park. Um, and as far as location for this year, it should stay the same, but we might mix it up a little bit. Okay. And in our closing few seconds here, if there was something you want to make sure, if we remember nothing else from this interview, you want to make sure we remember something, what, what would that something be? 
Hmm. Well, first I'd have to say, go Tigers. Okay. And second, uh, be sure to find a way to get involved. We design our programs to fit the needs of all the people. You know, whether you like to kayak or fish or play soccer or golf. Our goal as a sports department and recreation department is to make and create programs that fit everybody. So there's something out there for you and we encourage you to participate. Well, you do a wonderful job. You represent an award-winning department. We're so proud to have our Parks and Rec Division doing what it does in our city. And we thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. If you want more information about the Parks Department, sports offerings, or anything else we've talked about today, you can head to HealthyGermantown.org, where we've provided links to the resources we've discussed today. I'd like to thank Cynthia Nunnally from the Shelby County Health Department and Germantown Parks and Recreation Sports Coordinator Will Kastner for being here. And a special thanks to Maria Comas for sharing her story with us. If you'd like more information about this or any other show on Germantown Municipal Television, please visit www.gmtvonline.org. We'll see you when Healthy Germantown returns next month.